Welcome back to Capital Market live on Channels Television. If you're interested, you can weigh in on Twitter at Channels TV and at CTV Tempeli. Let's go for the key story that we are looking at because we're still in the spirit of the Global Money Week. And the Global Money Week, an annual celebration initiated by Child and Youth Finance International with local and regional events aimed at inspiring children and youth to learn about money, saving, creating livelihoods, gaining employment and becoming an entrepreneur. The theme this year is Learn, Save and Earn and celebrated this year between March the 27th and April the 2nd. The Nigerian Stock Exchange this week received a host of students and taught them the basics of the market. At the end of the meeting, one of the students was also privileged to sound the closing gong on the trading floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So I spoke with, the, with some of the facilitators of the annual events at the exchange. This is Pai Gamde, who is the acting uh, head of corporate services at the exchange, and Mr. Lumide Orojimi, who is the head of corporate communications. They both reveal the same thing, which is the fact that the NSE has impacted over 37,000 youths with the various knowledge building initiatives of the exchange. Let's listen. The relevance for us is that we start to educate and teach our young and future leaders how to prepare, how to begin to plan and prepare for a future. Not just an average future, but a future that is sustainable. So what it means for us as an exchange is that we expose these young ones to the different ways that you can learn, that you can earn, and that you can save money. And not just save the money, but invest it you know, and then reinvest that, uh, the, the, the profit that comes out from your investment. It's also very important for us because um, the, the Nigerian uh, Stock Exchange, you know, sits within the capital market sector. So m most of these young ones are familiar with the banks and, you know, the money market. They're familiar with that. But there's also the other aspect that they're not necessarily, they may not necessarily be familiar with. So it gives us an opportunity to expose them to the workings of the capital market, to the workings of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, uh, you know, to understanding what shares and uh, equities and bonds and the different products that uh, you can trade and use to generate revenue for yourself. So if I take, for example, the NSC SA competition, from the time it was instituted to today, we have impacted over 37,000 youths. And I think that that's really commendable. Um, secondly, I, I also think that, you know, the program has um, exposed several schools, because if you look at just for the SA competition, we're not talking Lagos alone. We're talking about other states. You know, in terms of just creating that awareness, our flyers go out to hinterlands where schools are, um, you know, s secondary schools are. And, and I think that just if I pick a flyer, you know, as a student and I look at it, I'm interested. So there's a trigger that goes on in my brain. Even if I, you know, I participate in just writing the, the essay itself, I have educated myself because I've had to do some research. I've had to um, read. I've had to ask questions. I have had to engage with people who are familiar with it. What that does is that it begins to open up. You know, it's like a little seed that you have planted in the ground. And it may take two weeks, three weeks, a month before that seed begins to germinate and we start to see the shoot come up and, you know, we start to see the green leaves. It's the same principle. So this, it is the seeds we are sowing. So if we have impacted about over 37,000 youths today, I think that the journey has just begun for us. Okay. We have, um, we, like you noted, we've commemorated a number of these uh, events that are targeted at the youth because this is a time 
to catch them. This is the time to get them interested and involved in the market. We're talking about sustainability. Um, if we don't begin to teach the young ones today, if we don't begin to educate them, provide a platform where they can learn the rudiments such that when they get older, that's not when they're having to learn it. What it is, it has, it has become a behavior, it has become a pattern and a way of life, and they just fall in line. They understand, I don't have to spend every money that comes my way. Um, I can spend a little, but before I even spend that little, I should think about how much am I saving, how much am I investing. As you know, quality education is one of the sustainable development goals, and as a sustainable stock exchange, we pride ourselves in supporting the sustainable development goals, and that's the reason why you find us embracing activities that are under the goals. And of course, you know, the Global Money Week is one of the ways by which on a global scale, people tend to assist the youth and children to learn about money, saving and investment. And that's why we've embraced, you know, um, the Global Money Week is one of the ways by which we give back when it comes to financial literacy programs. We talk about financial inclusion so much in this country, but people cannot be included you know, financially unless they are literate. So the first major impact for us is that we're helping people to understand what financial literacy is all about so that they can avail themselves of various programs that can make them to be inclusive when it comes to assessing financial services. Now, talking about the respective programs that we have, what does the future hold? Let's take the SA competition, for instance. On an annual basis, we grow participation by as much as 70%. That means that increasingly we are finding more and newer people to impact, not just in urban cities, but even in locations outside of, you know, Lagos and the urban cities that, you know, these people not have access to be able to get educated. Um, we also have this sort of program that on a yearly basis will impact, you know, on the average, about 4,000, 5,000 students across, you know, the nation. And we intend to scale up on some of these uh, initiatives. I'm um, talking about our adopt a school program. We're scaling that up. Presently, we're working on a special project that will even impact internally displaced, you know, people, such that a time will not come, you know, they'll be financially excluded from what is going on. So what does the future hold? I can only assure you that we'll get better, we'll do more, and we'll impact more lives. I'll tell you, the capital market is really deep. Those kids will surely need more time to really understand what the brokers are doing and how they can key into the whole game, basically. But then let's take a look at some of the things that will be events, basically, that we should be looking out for next week. We, like the uh, DMO DG said earlier, the capital market, of course, the FGN savings bond is for you, and that is something that you might like to key into this time. It's a two-year program. It opens again, the uh, season two, if you like, of it opens again on Monday, and so you should talk to your stockbroker or your fund managers to see how you can key into it. Once again, the NASD OTC is looking at engaging the LMC, the league management company, as well as the NPFL in Nigeria, to see how the whole talks around listing football clubs in Nigeria on the unlisted securities exchange in the Nigerian capital market can be made possible. That event holds next week, Tuesday. You should watch out for updates on all of these events in the, in the coming week. Well, that's our program for this week. The discussion continues on our Twitter handles. I'm Temple Ashadju. The Twitter handles, of course, you know, is at Channels TV and at CTV Temple. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.